All right, guys. So I've got a very special guest on my channel. It's Alison. Um, what can I say? Alison is a very uh, special character. Um, she's gone a long way back in business and uh, she talks a lot about uh, entrepreneurship, um, especially a topic around mental health as well. Um, Alison's grown her own business, you know, uh, called Human Focused. And one of the things she does is, is she likes to talk a lot about what is going on in the world of work, what is going on with uh, women in, in, in entrepreneurs and um, learning a lot about mental health in, in this sort of topic. And Alison is one of those characters you'll meet on uh, LinkedIn. She's full of life. Um, she's always uh, in and out of calls. She's, very, she's also a very busy entrepreneur as well. And she's built her respectable brand called Human Focus. And we're going to dive into some questions about what she does at Human Focus, because she said, Naz, look, we need to talk about Human Focus. We need to we need to share the story. And I said, sure, let's do it. You know, I'm all about mental health. And look, this is a topic where I think the community are, are, are going to take very seriously because this is quite a, a an important topic, especially with many people who suffer from mental health. And so, I, you know, I urge my followers uh, or to reach out to Alison at the end if you have any questions and uh, obviously reach out to her because she she I bet you she will come back to you so quickly she you know you'll 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 get the conversation running and so Alison thank you for coming and taking your time for this video interview how are you today I'm fantastic Naz and thank you so much uh, for having me here I'm really excited of course <laughs> yeah and i can tell you know you know with human focus what a great topic and but also what mm. a great uh sort of company you have and it, it just says it for itself human focus what is human focus to you alison and tell us a little bit about yourself of course thank you so much for that so of course i'm alison chuara uh, my first and foremost job is I'm a mother to two amazing kids. I say this wherever I go and people say, why? I think because, you know, one of the biggest challenges in life is actually raising your own children and actually raising them to be the That's best right. humans in the world. And so they can contribute positively into the world. So that is my biggest, I suppose, my biggest job. Beyond that, I am, of course, an entrepreneur. I've been in different uh, businesses, different sectors, uh, investment management. I've mm -hmm. also, at the moment, of course, I'm a co uh, corporate mental health facilitator in my own company, which okay. is Human Focus Limited. And I'm also a, a, a co-founder at an edtech company that is called Flossbus. And we specialize in uh, training young girls and women uh, to kind of bridge the gap in, you know, in, in gender and, you know, in the gender gap and the skills gap within the tech sector. So, a whole lot of uh, a whole uh, lot badges, of things you're doing badges on me yes yeah. um so you did ask as well what do we do at human focus that's right well it's an interesting question just to give you a really quick uh overview when we started human focus it was merely supposed to uh mitigate some of the issues that uh employees were experiencing and of course businesses were experiencing during the pandemic and post pandemic so what do we now do we are, of course, as I say, a corporate mental health um, HR and business management firm. So we've evolved as right. the cause and, and the need as reason. And what we offer is a range of evidence-based uh, human resource solutions uh, and services that support businesses in creating what I would like to think happier, healthier, and much, much more productive workforces. So mental health isn't always just about the person. It's also about the mental health, the corporate health of your organization. And we aim to bring really um, amazing transformational, effective and sustainable changes across a whole range of businesses. So we don't really focus on one particular niche. Of course, when we started off, yeah. we were niche inclined because the healthcare was really stretched and really stressed, but that stretch and stress has actually, if not, flowed to a number of businesses, if not every business across uh, the nation and globally. What a great story. And, you know, learning all about, you know, human focus, which is going to be the discussion of today. Um, mm. we're, we're talking about the whole nine yards, empowerment, 
individual right. success, professional development, you know, and, mm. and you're doing a lot, it seems, with the public sector as well, um, mm -hmm. helping those companies and, and, and private businesses with their mental health programs. Tell us, how do we feel empowered, Alison? How, what is going on today where we feel, you know, mental health is becoming a problem? You know, mental health is often a very difficult uh, topic to discuss. I think you and I had a discussion yeah. the other day, and it's not everybody that feels comfortable. And there's really um, a stigma around mental health. Generally, when we say mental health, but here's the interesting thing. Everybody has mental health. Did you know? So we have got good mental health, Me. <laughs> bad mental yeah. health, and then poor mental health. But we all have a mental health to either sustain maintain or build up to so you know mental health should not be looked at all in any way as a negative form and businesses actually have begun to take steps to ensure that you know the incorporating if you like uh or facilitating enabling psychologically safe environments to allow for these conversations to start taking place and this is where we actually come in as human focus so we facilitate one of the things that I liked and this is why I introduced myself as a mother first and foremost because just like a child you come in you teach them things they follow by example at some point they must carry on doing that job themselves they must continue to learn how to run by themselves That's you don't right. really teach your children to run do you you teach them how to walk and sometimes some don't need teaching but I think that in the era that we are in, we really have to find that empowerment and inject it within our businesses. And really it's through facilitation where we come in and we train and we encourage for these conversations to start taking place in businesses, in organizations. And you know, when we often say businesses, people ask, well, I'm only, there's only three of us working here. Brilliant, because you have an organizational culture to maintain. People often, don't work for a salary, especially now. They work for an organization that breeds and leaves their own vision of their own right. balance of lifestyle that they want to have. So more than ever before, it is really important for businesses now to really take mental health, corporate mental health seriously. I think that's a great response. And yeah, it, it's, a, it's, it's an important topic. I heard, you know, mental health is going to take over obesity and become mm. one of the most number one health factors in the world as we move forward with all these new technologies happening. Um, and your mobile phone is a mental health mechanism, you know, and Absolutely. it takes your mind, it takes your time, and we don't have time to have build natural conversations. Would you agree? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. We've got so many distractions right now in the world. So many. A lot of our conversations, a lot of what we're doing, is often happening on gadgets. And, yeah. um, and and actually you would walk into a household in a workplace where perhaps somebody sits within a department, they've never spoken to the other person unless they're going into a meeting. We need to have an environment where speaking to one another is encouraged because yeah. actual mental health suffers from not having that ability. So we need to, to break that stigma. We need to... A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think that you know, corporates, industry has a responsibility to do that. We spend a lot of our time actually at work. If we work, we spend mm -hmm. a lot of our majority of our awake time at work. So there has to be a balance between work and our normal life away from work. But here's the thing. If I'm stressed at home and my life is in balance and I'm feeling poor in other areas of my mental health, then that's likely to affect my effectiveness, my productivity yeah. at work, my performance will go down. So actually by actually helping and supporting good mental health in our employees and our staff, what we're actually saying is that we care enough about you so that when you come into work, you bring your brain, you bring your body, you bring the whole of you to work. There's a need for businesses to right. really, really start to inject good mental health policies, procedures, strategies. How do we engage our employees? How do we engage our staff to feel included, to feel like their voices can be heard? Because this is a start in the stem of poor mental health at work, where you're struggling with something. 
Yeah. But there isn't an environment that allows you to be heard. There isn't a framework that allows for these conversations of concerns to be raised. So really, when we think that we are running a bureaucratical company, where here's the thing, we're actually limiting our own growth as a business by actually creating an environment where I can come in yeah. and say, oh, Sir Naz, I'm really having an issue with this. In fact, I think we could do it differently. We are creating a diverse of thoughts. We are creating inclusion. We are encouraging contribution. So a problem that may necessarily take us three, four months to find a solution to when we have an environment that mm -hmm. I call yoga risk, uh, you know, a yogi mindset yeah. uh, kind of business, a yoga -ristic version of a business, which I, I, I think I, I made up that word, yoga -ristic, where you can stretch yourselves and bend yourselves it means that there's room for people to come in and inject yeah. something new without feeling like as if they are really scratching against the the, 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 um, the motion. So there's a lot that we can learn from just really starting that journey to create and facilitate that conversation start, have, start being had. Yeah. Everything else falls into place. And when you see that starting to work, there's an encouragement, even as a business, for you to do more and more. And I promise you, the results speak for themselves. The return on investment is huge. It's huge. It sure is. And, and more and more businesses why... need to do that, right? They need to, they need 100%. to invest. And I suppose that's where human focus comes in, right? This is exactly what you do, don't you? You, you help those individuals, right? A hundred percent. So we come in with the whole ethos of what are you doing to help mm -hmm. your staff have a work-life balance? Like I said earlier, you know, my biggest thing was when I woke up one day and I decided, no, oh. well, I didn't decide. I could see and felt that there was a lot of, you know, struggle around the world. You know, the pandemic really gave us mm -hmm. a completely different perspective into yeah. what is really important in life. And at some point, people realized that they weren't giving their families enough time. They weren't really connecting with the world that they live in more so. And I think it was like uh, what I call a constructive pause for everybody across the world where we stopped. And for the first time in the history of mankind in the last two, two centuries anyway, I'd like to think there yeah. was an opportunity for us to look back and think, wow, I haven't looked after me. It changed a lot, yeah. I haven't stopped. So that self-care, and we saw a number of resignations. This went happening just because they were happening. People's mental health were being affected. There was all of a sudden a certainty in the air. There was a concern. Am I still the same person that is going into that building, into that workplace? Mm -hmm. Am I, you know, our values changed. You know, we had a moment where values, visions, and ambitions changed. People who had worked throughout their whole life as mothers, for example, working mothers, all of a sudden wanted this balance. I want to be a sort of a, a hands-on mom as yeah. well as being a, a professional. And there was a collision of two worlds. And in fact, technology has allowed us to even advance that and makes people's almost dreams come true. However, there has to be conscious around everything that we do. And again, some of that at in workplaces we can control some of these you know where we can create balance within our workforces create mm -hmm. balance in our structures our frameworks so that the ability for somebody to come in and be the best version of themselves at human focus limited for example at uh, nazareth's company for example is very very possible and many that have tried this companies that are currently really implementing mental health policies, really implementing mental health and well-being into the core of their businesses have really seen dividends and they have no reason to stop doing it because it is factual, it is evidence-based and where there's evidence, there's facts and yeah. where there's facts, it cannot be argued. So even though we're talking about things of the mind, things of the heart, here's the thing. There's facts around it. We've got a lot of research around it that if you do it right, yeah. the return on your profitability, on your productivity as a business, and of course, in performance and less time being taken off, you know, it, it, it's just so enormous. You get your uh, return uh, of investment. <laughs>
yeah you 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 bring that uh they bring that performance to you and i think that's where yeah. you extract value so yeah. this is great i think this is where human focus focuses on exactly how you're helping these organizations and i think covid broke that deadlock where you know we were all on our laptops we were all on our phones and then mm. we said look businesses need more time to have face-to-face -face meetings or go out and, and and go to these events and so a lot of people were challenged and they did suffer from mental health during covid apparently it was the biggest mm -hmm. spike of mental health so yes it's, it's in it's enjoyable to hear what human focus are doing tell us a little bit about you know where uh, this this word empowerment comes from you know like how can you help support others in terms of what you're doing so we encourage effective communication so we come in as i say we train we facilitate and we mm -hmm. encourage for conversations to start taking place and where necessary, like I said, we come in with a robust background of HR, chartered HRs uh, who come in and actually yeah. help you to implement the work because we just don't want it to be a tick box exercise, right? So um, we help you put in the policies that a really good <laughs> company that is really, really serious, but most importantly, 100% so yeah. committed because there has to be a level of commitment and willingness for that change to actually happen. And here's yeah. the thing. One of the things that I found is that it takes courage to actually implement all of these changes that we're talking about. Because then there's the, also the other school of thought that says, am I actually giving people a free card, you know, where yeah. they can go on and, you know, start suing the company and all these things. That's not it at all. If you see, there is a lot of, things that are happening within workplaces but by encouraging effective communication by creating robust training and education for managers to support the staff that come yeah. under them this is where we come in we, so we have to break have... that stigma right we have to break that a hundred percent and it's creating that psychological environment that says yeah. our company are really committed we are willing to work with you. We are willing to put in and hear also your contributions around this. So creating that consistency and creating clear expectations that also reduces stress around professional matters yeah. and being clear about your intentions on what the company's vision and missions are. Because very, very often true. the cause of stress in a workplace is you don't know where the company is or has been, where it's at right now and where it's headed. It's headed. We have mm. a lot of uncertainty in the world right now. With the cost of leaving, we worry, am I going to work? And tomorrow I don't have my job. That is a cause of stress. You know, somebody- Do you think get... companies need help now? Do you think they need the help now? Do you think we're at this time with human focus to do this? A hundred percent. Here's yeah. the thing, Nazareth. You know, mental health in workplaces alone, in the UK- it's estimated that this problem alone, the cost of mental health in workplaces mm. only, workplaces only, is yeah. anything between 45 and 56 um, billion wow. pounds. That's a lot it's of a money. lot of money. And those are statistics that we cannot ignore as business people. Now, if I actually go in, I have, I always do what I call pulse surveys. Pals. Yeah, because I want to see how what what makes you want your to heartbeat. see what it's like. Yeah, you want to test what makes companies. your heartbeat in your company. Right. Yeah. And I go in and we do it the opposite way. So I right. come in, I ask you, we ask you, we have a conversation Good. with why are you calling us? What do you want from us? What do you want to achieve? What are your achievables? But here's the thing: the people that we are trying to support are the people that are the low ranking. These are the people that don't sit at decision making tables, right? So initially, what I what we do at Human Focus, we do a power survey. We, with your permission, we ask you to hear out your staff anonymously. But wow. it's based on the questions and the conversations that we have had. And what we are trying to do is to echo and see if what you think is happening in your company is exactly what is being received by your staff. So it's almost reverse psychology. And by doing so, you'll be amazed that nine out of ten times what we think we're actually doing we aren't really the message isn't trickling down it's not getting the out there okay. yeah it's not getting there 
So there's a lot that can be done now. If we have a problem that is costing us billions and billions of pounds as a nation, that's a lot of money Europe, globally to, to disrupt globally. Yeah. The UN have said it's a it's a one trillion that's right. dollar it's a one trillion dollar uh, a, a problem. That's a lot of money. In fact, it is a hemorrhaging of money that does not need to happen. No. I go into company and I say, what price do you put on your staff? What value do you put mm -hmm. on your staff right now? One of the most and the high the the, the uh, one of the I suppose uh, the hardest thing right now in any business is attracting the right talent, retaining them. So once we've gotten them, what are we doing to keep them? Are we selling our company really well to our employees? Yeah. Are we really doing that which we, because when it comes to interviews, it's not just the mm -hmm. employee that is looking for the job that is selling themselves. We as companies are also selling ourselves to that employee. What are we promising at the start? Now, and what do you get? Um, What's the response from these companies? What, what To tell my viewers so they kind of, absolutely and 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 you know nine yeah. out of ten times what we think we are doing isn't necessarily what is being heard or right. what is being received at the bottom sometimes when it comes to creating the best organizational culture which we are really big on is bringing in somebody third party i know that you've got your hr employee uh directors and departments i know that some companies already have you know uh mental health first aiders I also know that some companies already have EDNI they all have this in who place. are working on the equality, diversity, mm -hmm. and inclusion. But here's the thing: we come in from a bed's eye view. We look at it from the top down. Okay, so we do more than you will ever do for your own company. And I promise you, the results. Do you look at the whole company holistically. A hundred percent. We take on a, a holistic approach to how we do business. So not only are we just coming in and saying. You need to do this for customers. Yeah, and for tell them what games. to do, yeah. We work with you. Your goals good. Our our goals. Okay, so we want to know what do you want to achieve? What do you want? Okay, we just want a fantastic, a positive uh, organizational culture. We help you build that. We help you. But I say help you. We don't do it for you because it is the onus is on you as a business to drive that change. Because if we come in, and we spoon feed you. What happens when we leave? The company it will goes fall back apart, won't it? What it yeah. was. We come in and give you the tools to continue telling the great Good. story about your transformation, to continue impacting the future employees of your business. I cannot stress enough. When you have business leaders that are equipped, educated, yeah. and committed to driving really good positive mental health and well-being in their communities or their ecosystems things begin to happen there's magic around creating and living your vision and mission truly and fully because that's what corporate mental health is about it's about your organizational yeah, culture leaving a legacy about... with the company and giving them those tools to to, to 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 follow that legacy and i think we've we've broken down pretty much everything you've done in that in that sense and you've taken that holistic approach haven't you and a hundred percent and what we do is completely different to what any other company are doing mm -hmm. out there and i can categorically say this i come from a lived experience of having been in companies where i felt okay things could have been done differently i also have friends and myself having businesses where you know more can be done and there is something to be said about valuing people currency a lot. Amazing. A there lot you go, guys. People. This has been such a great, uh, great conversation with Alison about human focus, learning all about what she what, what they're doing. And uh, where can we reach you, Alison? Where, where are you? You're on LinkedIn. Um, uh, we can find you there and find more yes. about your company there. Right. 100%. If you go to Alison Chihuahua FRSA, which is mm -hmm. my LinkedIn, and it's Alison, A L I S O N, Chihuahua spelled as C H I W A R A and F R S A for fellowship. And uh, our offices are actually based in Edinburgh, in Scotland. However, because of technology, we can reach you anywhere, we can travel to you. We can create a solution that suits you. So we, there's no one size fits all for us. 
-hmm. we are here to promote real difference and make real change. Even if you're a one-man band, directors, solo business entrepreneurs also suffer from organizational mental uh, 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 mental do, health. Yes. So do reach us. And uh, all of my details are actually on that, uh, on my LinkedIn. However, for those of you that may want to reach me by mobile phone, my telephone number is 075-844-83564. And our email address, if you want to contact us, is info, I-N-F-O, at mm -hmm. human hyphen focused dot com so that's info at human hyphen focus dot com and we will get right back to you and we'll work with you to ensure that what you have is a positive organizational culture where people can thrive and be the best version of themselves and thank you for having me Naz. thank you alison what a great great uh uh final uh close down to this interview and you know this is a call to action guys you know alison's very serious in what she does and this is why we made this uh, video interview happen so to all my viewers um when we get this out uh do reach out to alison as a uh, as a call to action because she takes mental health quite yeah. seriously and uh we we need to we need to embark on many people to 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 follow human focus and human focused are open 24 hours a day you know you can reach out to alison at any time you want Alison, it's great to hear your story. Maybe we'll do a follow up in a, in a few months' time and hear about more of what Human Focus is doing. Absolutely, that'd be amazing. And thank you so much, Naz. I felt at home. This is great. This is where thank I want to be talking about things that I'm passionate about. <laughs> the smile says a lot, guys. All right, guys. Thank so you. thank you, everyone. And uh, this was Alison's interview with us today. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.